Richard Kaufman, the Chair of Energy and Finance for New York, uh, came on into that new role a few years ago and oversees uh, a number of different energy entities, state, state entities in New York that previously were a bit fragmented. He's come on and, and I believe brought those together, uh, spearheaded a, a more unified vision. The, the big thing going on right now is renewing energy vision. And this, this uh, initiative, it's got a lot of buzz, uh, a lot of attention, uh, potentially putting New York at the forefront of how energy is delivered, how it's paid for, uh, transforming that. Uh, it's been called ambitious, it's been called promising, it's been called a radically different system. And I'll just briefly run through the basic points, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it, it would boost renewable resources like wind and solar, uh, put a more emphasis on decentralized generation. So you don't have as many of the big power plants, you have solar panels on homes, you have microgrids, you have things distributed out through the system to improve reliability, cut costs. Um, sounds like a great thing. This was announced about a year ago. I think the plan was adopted by the Public Service Commission mm -hmm. in February. And so I guess anything you want to elaborate on there, and then when will we start seeing tangible results? Okay, uh, so I, I would like to elaborate on that if that's okay. Certainly. So, so let's let's sort of start from from uh, some some basics here in terms of the electricity system in the state. So, uh, New York State in the last ten years spent seventeen billion dollars on uh, on just maintaining the physical infrastructure of the electric grid. You know, we have a Electric grid really started in New York State, so it's not a new grid. Uh, and in the next 10 years, we're going to spend another $30 billion. So what we have is a dynamic where uh, even though power costs, the cost to produce power, generation costs, have those costs have um, abated, increases in those costs have abated because of the benefits of, of natural gas. The cost of delivering the power uh, continue to increase because of the continued investments that need to be made in in um, the transmission and distribution system. And so the thing that's when you look at that, that's that's really um, expensive for New Yorkers. New Yorkers pay some of the highest electricity costs in the country, uh, and it's going to get more expensive. Um, and it's an energy inefficient system because uh, s uh, we um, uh, so a large power plant, uh, maybe half the energy content goes up the chimney in the form of heat because we've located power plants generally far away from population centers. Uh, so it's energy inefficient, but it's also the way it's structured now is very capital inefficient because the capacitization of the system is about 55%. And so most, the sort of one of the revolutions in sort of American business in the last 30 years has been improvement in capital efficiency. Companies, manufacturing companies have become very much more efficient through ch adoptions of technology and changes in business model and changes in financial incentives. But these changes have not come to the electric utility sector. So then the way we've dealt with the desire to have, and, the, and more than the desire, the importance of having more renewable energy uh, and energy efficiency is we, we uh, actually add a levy to customers uh, and collect money for energy efficiency and renewable energy programs. So. Uh, that's a further cost to customers. And what we're doing then is grafting onto the system, which is already energy and capital inefficient, a series of energy efficient and energy efficient and renewable energy projects in a kind of patchworked way. We're not building an integrated grid, a network grid. So if you think about the the, uh, the computer system now, the computer system, we don't even, you know, sort of see it. Uh, I mean, we, how it all works, but we know that there's a cloud, which is a mainframe, and we have our PCs, and we have these distributed things connected to uh, 
a central solution. And that's really the way the electricity system ought to work. Because the thing about these distributed solutions is that they can really help the energy efficiency and can help the capital efficiency of the system, and thereby we can create a system which is more resilient, uh, cheaper over time, and more energy efficient. And so that's that's what we're trying to do. So the so sorry, John. John. So the, the point is is not inherently just to have more distributed solutions. It's the the intent is to build an integrated system, networked hybrid system that's a combination of central station and distributed solutions, and really trying to use um, kind of market-based mechanisms so that the uh, so that we're deploying these distributed energy areas in parts of the grid where it can have the most value. And then what is... Um, is that too wonky for everybody? <laughs> we have an insider crowd. Okay, here, all right. So, uh, all right. What is, what is the timeline then? Of course, for, I don't know what everybody else talked about, so maybe this is... You're warmed up. Right. We, we did affordable housing and oh, then okay. uh, so after. the governor's trip to Cuba. Okay, so, okay, uh, great. Um, I guess when, when would we be likely to see tangible results? Is it, is it two years? Is it five years? Is it 10 years? Just rough, rough estimates. Well, so we're already beginning to see some things. Uh, so uh, an example of how the utilities can operate differently uh, is uh, in Brooklyn. So in Brooklyn, uh, an, it happens to be an area of uh, a lot of load growth. And so the traditional way of uh, that this load growth would be satisfied would be to build more infrastructure. So it would cost Con Ed over a billion dollars to build a new substation. And instead, what uh, what Con Ed is 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 doing in the process of doing uh, is to they went out and said, look, we got this problem. Uh, rather than rather than it's interesting in a lot of ways because rather than just saying we've got a problem and we're going to procure a, a new billion dollar substation, they went out uh, uh, with the general problem that they had, which is we have this load growth and asked the market to come back with different solutions that would be alternative solutions that would cost less. And so what came back to Con Ed through that process was a whole range of distributed solutions that include uh, demand response, which is a reduction of, 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 of demand. Uh, so energy efficiency, uh, uh, combined heat and power, uh, some solar. Um, I think maybe they may even include some kind of other store, some kind of storage solutions. And so this will cost ratepayers hundreds of millions of dollars less because there'll be less capital deployed. So it'll improve that capacity utilization, again, from about 55%. And the point about the 55% is that it's the reason why the system is, is, has such low capacity utilization, it's built for the hottest couple of days during the year. Uh, and there has been, and utilities, actually, the way utilities get paid in terms of their profit is only through the uh, capital that they deploy. Utilities make no profit on human capital, only the quantum of capital. That's how they get paid now. So under this new approach, it, ratepayers, customers, will there'll be less capital deployed, so it'll be it'll save customers money that way. And because there'll be less peak power purchased, uh, that'll also save customers because uh, the peak power is the most expensive power to to uh, in the market. So it'll save customers money that way. So that's an example here and now of something that's being done differently. And we have across the state. Uh, a number of areas which are which have uh, we're, we're calling them grid opportunities, but they're you know you can call them grid constraints in in this in this uh, in this group and 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 so they're uh, I think in in most cases now I think we will see utilities when they face uh, opportunities where there's a constraint and a distributed solution can provide an alternative uh, approach they will uh, they will propose this different alternative. So that's something that's tangible we can see right now. Another thing that's tangible that we can see now or we'll see in the next few months is that we have demonstration projects that will be uh, uh, pr uh, pr uh, presented uh, in the next couple of months. Um, I don't know, there'll be some number, uh, five, ten, some number of projects that will demonstrate 
how this new system will work, uh, the new regulatory system, because what we're talking about is changing the role of the utilities. And I should just maybe talk about that, because what because what we're going to ask the utilities to do, what we have what we have asked the utilities to do, is to now, in addition to providing electricity, uh, that they have to be more capital efficient. They have to shape the load. Right now, you know, your air conditioning and your refrigerator and your washing machine, all the system is built so all these can go on, you know, randomly all at the same time. Well, there's no reason that they have to operate all exactly at the same time. And that's the reason why we are wasting so much capital and so much energy because it's easy to put to 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 have these uh, pieces of equipment operate at slightly different times, and it will make a more efficient system. So that's when we talk about shaping the load. So the, they will shape the load. They will uh, integrate uh, distributed energy resources into the system. Right now, that's not a business for them. Uh, it's They do that as a matter of compliance. So we'll turn that into a business for them. Uh, again, it's not a business for them at all to be capital efficient. That's we're going to provide economic incentives for them to be capital uh, efficient. Um, we want them to procure uh, demand response and energy efficiency. Again, today that's not a business for them either. Uh, that's something they have to do as a matter of compliance. So this gives you a flavor of 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 some of the things we want the utilities to do. And maybe the last thing that we want utilities to do uh, is, if you think about again a kind of technology um, uh, example, if you think about uh, the iPad and the way Apple makes money. Apple makes money by third parties developing apps for 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 the iPad, and you know it's and the more apps actually that are developed, the more valuable that platform becomes. So think about now utility as a platform, and third parties developing different applications, and that that a utility can get paid for. So. So some of these applications are going to be energy related. So, uh, um, uh, so when I talk about these demonstration projects, um, demonstration projects are not tests of technology, but tests of business models, where they involve some value-added uh, product or service that's being offered to a customer, participation by a third party where they get paid, and a participation by the utility where they get paid. That's the idea of the demonstration project which is uh, to show how the new model is going to work. So there are going to be some that are going to be, as an example, I'm not saying it's, it's exactly going to be this, but I'll give some possibilities of things that could be, would be uh, that's, that a company will come along and say, we'll put in a thermostat, one of these smart thermostats in your house, and um, uh, we'll put all the money in to, to uh, Put the sensors in, and to what I talked before about, uh, you know, the uh, changing the uh, how how uh, the appliances are going to work, and you'll get paid a check every month for doing that, um, for participating. Because now what will happen is there'll be the ability for for you to have energy savings and participate in the shaping the load and demand response. You don't have to do anything. Okay, that's an example where uh, the way the third party will get paid is through some. Uh, the monetization of, 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 or sharing some of the benefits with the utility in terms of shaping the load and 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 participation in uh, in in energy efficiency. So that's an example. Another example might be uh, um, appliances. Um, there's a uh, 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 this again. May, think about it as an example where if you think about how the solar industry developed it, it uh, developed. Uh, was often uh, uh, if you, um, uh, you pay 5% less on your electricity and you can have solar, right? And a lot of people say, well, that's a, that's a great deal. I'll, I'll do that. So imagine the same thing where, and again, I'm making this up, where uh, a company comes along and says, we'll pay your same electric bill less 5% and we'll give you new appliances. So that's actually, that might be an interesting offer. Now, for what's going to 
what's going to make the service provider of the of the appliances they'll get paid because those new appliances will be energy efficient they'll have a chip in it that will enable the appliances to participate in the demand response market it will the utilities will get paid because they'll have a more efficient system and the customer will benefit because the customer has new appliances and save a little money so this is an example of 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 a kind of service where where value is being provided to customers that's not really about energy. In this case, it's about having better appliances. Uh, and so that's really one of the interesting things about where we are in thinking about these distributed energy solutions, is that it's not only that they can provide a more capital efficient system, not only can they provide a more energy efficient system, but they can provide, in theory, a whole range of, of of other value-added services for the way we use it. You know, after all, we don't get up in the morning and say we want to use more electricity. It's what does the electricity provide to us? That's why we like the electric system. So Edison thought the electric system was going to be about lighting. It turned out to be much more than lighting, right? Lighting's a fantastic invention, but we use electricity for a lot more than lighting. And really, we may be faced at that same point of inflection today, where we have the opportunity for these distributed solutions uh, around in home automation that's going to provide more comfort, more convenience, more health, more entertainment. These are things that we use the electricity system for. Uh, and, and, and yes, as a result, the, it may become a more clean and energy efficient system, but that may not be the, the driver for, for many customers. So that's why uh, we're really very keen in, in, in this uh, regulatory process for, for there to be more innovation that will be brought in around customers because it's this competition around customers and innovation that's going to help us figure out what it is the customers want. And these demo projects, uh, which I guess in the next few months, so you'll we'll be start, rolling those So out. we'll start seeing some of these, some of these projects. I'm not saying they're all going to be terribly exciting, but they're going to be, they're going to be, you know, we're going to see things that involve, uh, again, third parties, working with utilities, offering something that's that's different, that is going to be um, uh, um, uh, value to customers, value to the third parties, and value to the utilities. And, and is that going to be like roughly a year, or, or any sense of the timeline, how long these might How long run, the projects the, will take? The demos? I, I think, I you know, um, yeah, the, I, I think they could be a year kind of projects. But, you know, the, uh, the objective here is, is so that um, – so that all of us can begin to see uh, how the future might start to look a little bit different. Because one of the things that you know that is that we're we're talking about is really making very major cultural uh, systemic change. Because we're talking about a, a utility industry that is a it's been a regulated business in a certain way for a hundred years. So when we talk about changes in business model, which is what it is we're talking about, that's you know, that's a hard thing to do. Uh, third parties, for example, the third, so we're asking, so I talk about third parties, like think about like solar companies as an example of a third party. So right now the way it's been set up kind of around the country is we have sort of the stereotypic slow moving utility uh, that wants to fend off the attackers. And the attackers are saying, well, uh, you know, we're, we hate the utilities, we want to kill off the utilities. And actually, you know, that, that's really not a very good path either way because until third parties are willing to take on the obligation to serve, which is what utilities do, that's the part of the regulatory compact, um, it means that they can't just, uh, it means that, that um, we can't just have a system where it's just good for some segment of customers and not good for all customers. We have to build this integrated network uh, and so it means the cultural change is not only do the utilities need to start thinking about third parties as being uh, not, not just attackers, but as customers and partners, third parties also have to think about utilities as customers and partners too. So that's why uh, these demonstration projects are so important because they will really start to inform uh, the utilities and third parties and, and all of us about how we really want to change the system because that's really what we're aiming for is broad systemic change. 
And and you mentioned yes, it's been a hundred years that we've had this this system, and it's it's become outdated. And you mentioned this this Brooklyn example of, of one thing that's already going on. But in terms of the this very large overhaul, this transformation, where you're you're changing the role of the utilities in, in some ways, and you're completely changing how things are going to be financed and distributed. How long does that take? You know, from from you, you start these demo projects, you see what works, you see what doesn't. I, is it a matter of you know five years, ten years? Uh, well, I don't want to give you a specific. This sure. is going to be, you know, this is a process. I mean, the the utilities are going to have to file um, with the with the uh, Department of Public Service implementation plans. So that will that will be starting to happen next year. They are going to be filing rate, you know, utilities file rate cases. So right. these things, this will be implemented over over a period over a period of time. Um, so um, I don't want to give you uh, you know a specific date. Sure, but, sure. But you know, but, but the just a rough sense. But, but, of, the, but, of the, but again, the trends are that we have uh, the, the, the the some of the underlying technology trends are really quite dramatic, and so that we have this cost of the of the central station system. You know, the traditional way we've been producing and distributing electricity continuing to go up in cost and cost of all distributed solutions going down. Uh, so it's not just solar, but it's batteries and fuel cells and everything. And you have a lot of people thinking about using big data. And so, so the, uh, and with not very much scale, the, you know, or additional scale, these costs will, will continue to decline in some cases exponentially. So, so that's one of the things that, that uh, when we talk about uh, 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 timing, it's not just how quickly um, it's not just how quickly the culture change happens. It's also we have uh, some factors that relate to changes in technology, which will also uh, can have an effect on, on change. So really what we're trying to do as, as government is just try to set up the, uh, some in, uh, market rules and incentives and then let, let uh, a lot of the market work. And to be clear, not everything is going to be market-based, uh, they're going to be, uh, you know, we can do a much better job, for example, dealing with low-income customers, So, because what we're doing right now to low-income customers, because uh, uh, a number of low-income customers are, 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 are there's not going to be a market-based solution, per se, for a number of low-income customers, so we don't want to create a, 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 a situation where low-income customers don't, particip don't participate, don't get the benefits of, of some of the new technology and new services, but what we're doing now with low-income customers, we can do a better job, because low-income customers uh, are, pay a higher pr proportion of their income in terms of, of electricity costs, and so we're on a path which is, which is not a good path, in addition to that, you know, uh, they, uh, uh, the the um, uh, when um, uh, when we have uh, low-income customers have difficulty meeting, able to meet their bills, then you know there's a threatening of shutoff, and then all the costs of bills that are uncollected get charged to ratepayers, and so there's this all this all this uh, pressure put on low-income customers and. I think we can we can do we can do a better job in trying to figure out how to take the resources that we have uh, that we're already spending and have a better a better result. So I just want to make it clear that some of what we're doing is market based and some is 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 not going to be market based. And the uh, Public Service Commission has held uh, a number of hearings uh, over the past months uh, on this rev proceeding. Mm -hmm. What would you say is the biggest complaint or concern uh, that was brought up in those well, hearings? Well, so, uh, well, I'd say there are a few things. I mean, uh, you know, it's when when you're when you're aiming for systemic change. Um, I guess if you do it right, um, eventually everybody's going to, you know, a lot of people should be very happy. Um, because uh, what we're talking about here is a system that's pro-innovation, pro-consumer, um, pro-environment, pro-growth. You know, that ought to be a pretty big tent in which to have a lot of people be happy. But we are changing things, and so in that change, 
a number of people are a little unhappy. Uh, and so, uh, so we're, you know, we're mindful of that. Uh, some people have said, well, you're, you know, you're moving too fast. Other people said you're moving too slowly. Uh, uh, some people have, uh, have said that you're too much in favor of utilities. Um, some utilities may feel like we're, you know, they wanted to own distribution assets, and we've said that actually only third parties can do that. So maybe the utilities aren't happy with us. Some of the environmental groups, I think, it are, are may be suspicious of what we're doing because, because a lot of what we're talking about are, are moving away from hard mandates to things that are that are market driven. There are some people that have said, well, maybe you've got too much emphasis on markets, so that's why I said what I said, because it's not just a market-based solution. So um, um, I guess everybody has got a little bit, a little bit, uh, as I say, I, there's a little anxiety ac across uh, many different in interest groups, but it's not surprising. And utilities in particular, they'll take on the role of, of traffic cop, right, uh, in this new... For, for the moment, that's correct. I mean, yeah. this issue of the, the being the platform provider, that's right. Right now, the utilities are going to have that. Um, uh, and they're we're going to expect that? we're they're embracing they're embracing it, but you know they'll there'll be certain things that they'll be expected to do, and so that will uh, over time we'll need to make it clear about what it is that we expect of them if they if they wish to continue to have that role. And I think we have time for maybe one or two questions. If we have a, a question from the audience. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very interested in knowing uh, a little bit about the micro uh, grids right. and how that would work because as I have seen it, the authorities have been an impediment to implementing the technology mm -hmm. as they see it as a vehicle that uh, is going to take away profits. So um, I'm just curious. The, the authorities or the utilities? The utilities. Yeah, okay. So, so a couple things. And one, one th thank you. And, uh, one of the things that, you, uh, John, you asked about, what are we going to see? Well, one of the things we're also seeing right now across the state are 150 communities, more than 150 communities, that are, that are working on what, what, what the governor announced is New York Prize. And this is a, uh, a competition for communities to figure out what it is that they would want out of something that's bigger than just a microgrid, a kind of we're calling it a community grid. Uh, and these are uh, areas around the state, again, that are, in, we're calling them grid opportunity zones. And I guess we're lucky because we have opportunity zones in the grid all across the state. So to your point, um, there, uh, in, in some number of these uh, communities, in fact, I had a meeting today with, a, with an energy developer uh, that has uh, that is thinking about with respect to a wastewater and solid waste uh, uh, part of the town and a hospital how they can integrate into this idea a, a some kind of waste energy plan so 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 I, I would put the waste energy stuff in the context of uh, of a distributed solution where if it can make sense for the for uh, the grid uh, that there should be incremental uh, compensation that's paid and, and that the utility gets paid for integrating those resources into, into the grid as opposed to the way that it is now. I think that there, I think w there's one policy issue, so again, this is a safe space, so I can just raise this point. You know, one of the challenges here uh, in that, that we have is that, um, is that utilities uh, don't own generation in the state. That's not a challenge. Utilities do not own generation in the state. It's, they're just distribution and transmission companies. They're wires companies. And we have what's called decoupling in the state, which is considered a very progressive um, policy because what it means is the utilities don't get paid based upon the amount of electricity. They don't get paid anymore based upon the amount of electricity that we consume. They're completely indifferent. So if we have energy efficiency, no problem. That is, their revenues are protected. The challenge, this is the problem. The problem is, is that we have to 
allocate the cost to the system across customers. Um, right? That's what we have to do. And we're, deter and we're doing that on a volumetric basis. That's how you, that's your share, your share of the, of the electricity system is determined based upon how much electricity you, you consume. So it's not about the utility profit. It's about how we allocate those costs. And so we've created a kind of difficult incentive because actually if I'm really energy efficient in my house, my bill goes down, but your bill goes up. And so, so we need to figure out the right way or a, a, an appropriate way, let's put it that way, where we can, where we can uh, create the right incentives for, uh, for uh, energy efficiency, for distributed uh, solutions, and also find a way to appropriately allocate the cost of the system. And I think that's all we have time for, so I'll bring up Sam to conclude yes. us. And thank you, thank Mr. Kaufman.